I'm joined by the, the Chief Minister of Friday Briefing, and really, I suppose the, the, the story will be your Roman Coman in Ramsey. 150 yeah. people. Yes, it was a full house again. I think it's been pretty much the same in every meeting we've had. This was the fourth meeting of this type. We've now circumvented the whole of the island, uh, and uh, the enthusiasm which we got at the meeting this week uh, was every bit uh, as good as, as all the others. A good range of questions uh, and some lively interest. But the same old, same old, isn't it? And the same things will be appealing around the Isle of Man. There's no particular well, northern... No, it, it, um, it's certainly not been uh, localised in the, the context of uh, the questions that were asked. But the questions do vary from location to location, depending on, on the issue of the day. And at this time, it was obviously uh, tuition fees were very much at the, mm. the forefront. Uh, but a number of uh, other points were raised uh, well, in the same man. What happens now? Because you, you've done the Isle of Man... You're going to start repeating? Yes. Well, initially, of course, it was quite a big uh, risk. It's never been tried anywhere before, as far as I know, where the entire cabinet of, of a government uh, is on the road and publicly uh, accessible. Um, but I think the experience we've had so far uh, makes it very clear to me that it's worthwhile. It's been very well received from the public, and the reaction I've had afterwards has been very, very positive. So it's my intention to keep these going as long as the public still want them. And while we still get full houses, uh, we will now be starting a second round, and the next meeting is planned for Douglas uh, towards the end of April, I think, uh, and we will start the, the circuit again. So as long as the public want it, as long as they keep uh, uh, turning up and uh, you know the, the meetings are very, very constructive, very positive, then I think it's, uh, it's got to be beneficial. Okay. Well, just as uh, the pine with things probably declines a bit on the radar, today there's an announcement, or in fact last night I think, for the stock market, that they're now going again for a, a second try to increase the, the land mass and, and what they're going to do down there. Does that have any direct bearing on your investment <coughs> in it? Not uh, in an immediate effect, but uh, clearly I think there is somewhere in the region of 100 acres undeveloped uh, around Pinewood uh, currently, and uh, that has a huge value which um, the company, I think, are trying to, to capitalise on at the moment. Uh, there has been talk in the past of putting housing on it. I think the current plan is to develop and extend the studio space further uh, as well. Um, ultimately, I think it will get planning approval. What will be the outcome this time? We'll have to wait and see. I mean, the value would go up, wouldn't it, of the, of the whole? Yes, uh, absolutely. If they get it. If, uh, uh, if and, and probably when they get planning permission, it will most definitely add to the value of the company. And that obviously will re be reflected in the value of the Alaman government shareholding in that company. So looking ahead now to the, the, the forthcoming month, we, we've got um, tuition fees back on. That's going to go through, is it, this time? Well, this Tinwald, February Tinwald, is going to be a very big month uh, for government. Um, Yes, we have tuition fees. Um, we've had the best part of three months now of discussion on it. We've compromised. We've, we've uh, uh, amended the regulations on a number of occasions to try and accommodate some of the concerns. Um, I believe we have done enough now to uh, win the day, and uh, I hope we will achieve the results we want in Tinwald in February. Um, but the other thing, of course, this month is the budget, and uh, they all link in together. And uh, bearing in mind the very difficult times that we are living in financially and the urgent need to rebalance the Alaman government's budget, uh, it will be, I think, a livelier debate than we've had for quite some time this year. Because it's still the case that you, they have to vote for it all, don't they? They can't pick and choose. Yes. And is that getting to the point where it won't work? You will get the time when you will not get it passed because there'll be certain bits that are yeah. palace, in palace. Well, the, the budget is a difficult uh, issue for some members to, to deal with. They are, are uh, asked, obviously, to, to vote not just for government's financial projections on that day, but the implications of that are far and wide and, and cover every level, level of government expenditure. So we can't expect um, members to vote for the budget and then be expected to vote for everything else uh, individually later on. So it, it's a slightly different animal to what we, we're used to doing. Uh, we've been very lucky over the last 10 years. Uh, we've uh, only ever had one or two members vote against. It tends to go through with the unanimous support. I suspect that won't be the case this year because there are a number of issues. And of course, on the same agenda is uh, the de debate on tuition fees. So they, they may well somehow get 
connected. I mean, everyone gets a look at it first, but there's a lot of complaints yeah. they don't get enough time to really pull it to pieces and to do yes. their own sort of calculations. That's almost a, this is it, boys. We're now going in there yeah. to do it in public, and now I want you to vote for it. That has been the case in the past. Uh, traditionally, members get a, a private uh, briefing on the budget about a week or so before the debate. This time, though, we brought it forward, and uh, the uh, members of Tinwald had a private presentation about the budget this week. So they will have had three weeks, over three weeks, in effect, um, to study the uh, small print of the budget and to ask any further questions that, that, that they want in the intervening period. This is the longest stretch that they've ever had to study the budget, and I hope that will lead to a more informed debate on the day. And uh, in the past, though, whenever you've been taking people into their confidence, sometimes these things start leaking out. Yes, and that is a risk. Um, members have been asked not to uh, leak they, they must treat uh, the budget as confidential at this stage. Um, there are one or two members who we all know from time to time uh, do go to the press on, on some of these matters. We just have to hope that they will respect our request for confidentiality because the, the, the more that respect is upheld, the more information that can be uh, uh, given to members in advance of a budget debate. It must have been a long time ago since you were always, when you were in charge of the budgets, of course, mm. you know, we were always saying, and we can put this much into reserves this year. Mm. It's a distant memory. Yes, I think it will be some little time before we're in a position to put more money back into the reserves again. You're going to have to take uh, some more out. Can you tell well, me yes. The, the uh, three year um, rebalancing plan that we projected last year uh, envisaged using 55 million in reserves this year, uh, this year ending. 31 million next year, and I think it's 8 million the year before. Now, it's, that's roughly 90 million pound of reserves over a three year period. Um, we obviously uh, hope to, through our savings, through enhanced economic activity, increased tax receipts, uh, to reduce that uh, uh, requirement. But if by using that limited amount of reserves over that three years, we can get back into balance again. Uh, on the fourth, fifth and sixth years, we can perhaps start considering rebuilding those uh, reserves for the future. Because we've used the analogy of the super tanker yes. slowing down and changing direction. Are you on course? I mean, Yes, without giving anything away at this stage, I think uh, we will be able to send out a positive message that uh, although it's been a very, very difficult and challenging 12 months to get to where we are, we are slightly ahead of where we expected to be, and that will be reflected in the figures uh, on the day when the budget is presented. OK, well, we'll have more chats between then and now. Uh, by the way, MTTV is a year old uh, today, actually, and we've been doing these, these chit chats for some time. I don't yes. know about you, but do you find this communication with the public a, an interesting exercise? Yes, very much so. I, I think you should be congratulated for uh, keeping the, the operation going for 12 months. Uh, the, the range of issues which you've um, reported on uh, go way beyond just the, the, the political. It's a, a, a widespread reflection of life on the Isle of Man over this last 12 months. I think it's been greatly appreciated, certainly from government's point of view. Um, and you spoke earlier about Roman Coman. One of the concerns I've had is that in the past we may have had success in, in developing policies, but we've been very poor at actually explaining it to the public. So the greater the media uh, interest in what government does, to give us the opportunity to explain why we're doing things and some of the, the, the problems we're having to, to face, uh, the better it is for democracy on the island, I think. So your uh, programs, I think, have made a, a positive contribution. So well done.